welcome to our brand new podcast, uh, The Impostables. Basically, anyone can be a creative, and it's the day-to-day creative things and challenges that we find that really interest me, and I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, like, how do I even start? Do you create for yourself do you need people to tell you not tell you what to do but commission something from you Mm. or are you best just sitting in a box or a cave somewhere (laughs) you know up a mountain up a tree or a coffee shop or a coffee shop and generating your own ideas Welcome to From the Mic Stand here on Artist Echoes. We are down at our studio this week. And this week is going to be a little bit different because we are chatting about a brand new podcast called The Impossibles. And uh, I'm one of the hosts, one of the creators of The Impossibles. And I'm joined by my friend Charlie Omrod. Here's the other host that you just heard. Hello. Uh, so yeah, well, I think we're just going to begin by like telling us a bit about the podcast, about each other. Uh, as you know, I run Art Echoes. I also um, wrote a book about poetry, uh, run the universe and other occupations. I uh, run poetry nights and do loads of different creative things. And over the years, I've done a ton of different creative things and you're pretty similar, I guess. Uh, yes, but more music oriented yeah. than poetry oriented. Mm. So it's kind of the same thing, but the other way up. And so why did we decide to do this, this mad podcast, The Impossibles? Because um, we were bored. <laughs> it, it, was, it was near the end of one of the other lockdowns. Yeah, yeah. And we thought, oh, why don't we do a podcast? Mm. Because um, we were having some conversations in here yeah. with um, regard to your other mic stand um, guests and mm. where the most interesting bits about the, the conversations tend to be with um, the subject of how people come up with stuff yeah, and how they actually then get stuff out. And I think we had a conversation that was about my book, Rolling Universe and Other Occupations, and it just went on for two hours. <laughs> we didn't really chat about the book, we just chatted about loads of different weird creative yes. ideas. Yes, we did. And also when you get guests into the studio, they'll chat about the project they're working on and any mm. struggles that they've had, and I just thought it'd be quite a nice idea to just put that into a podcast form really yes because people are always very happy to tell you about when things are going when things are going well but also mm. when they're really difficult to do yeah um, mm. so that was part of the, the podcast and we've uh, had a content. few different ideas and different formats of how we'd like to do this and then we finally we settled on this podcast The Impossibles I can't really remember how we came up with a name um, because it, it was something to do with your, one of your poems about superheroes mm. Um, it was off a conversation about that. I thought, oh, right. why do we make it a sort of superhero yeah. name um, about how difficult it is to create stuff and put it down and actually mm. finish something and then get it out into the world? Well, yeah, one of the things a lot of people who are creative, it's imposter syndrome. Like, mm. you, yes, even if you've been true. working in the creative industry for years, you're well, still like, decade or I'm two. faking this. <laughs> mm. Which is why the first episode is... Who are we to be doing this? Yeah, definitely. Um, and then leading on to that, um, you know, why, who is anybody to be creating stuff? Because mm. sometimes it feels like you have to be able to justify what you're doing, justify that you're creating something, hmm. justify that you're making, you, you have enough working as an artist. Talent you know? and interesting ideas mm. and um, innovation and imagination. Yeah, I think the first thing we kicked the podcast off was, well, eventually after it was all recorded, uh, we decided to create our own little uh, theme team for it to make it feel a bit more official. Yes. Uh, so you've written a piece of music for it, I've got a bit of poetry for it, and we just came together, whereas well, my poetry was written well, quite a while ago, actually. Yes, yeah, so you'd, you'd done the, the, the poem for it, but it fitted the, the idea of the mm. podcast so well. So yeah, the idea behind the poem was like... A, someone's reading your rights i'm not actually sure if these are british rights or american <laughs> rights but it's like what it's people always see on their tv shows yes when you've been arrested yeah. <laughs> this is what and i was reading a book quite recently um by amanda palmer and she um thinks of the impostor syndrome as the fraud police and the fraud police will 
come along and uh, oh, read that book. That was a good <coughs> they'll come along and they'll basically arrest you because you're an imposter. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that's the perfect time to do the theme tune do, and the poem. Uh, do your poem. So yeah, this poem is called uh, The Fraud Police. Sir, step away from the microphone. Sir, step away from the microphone. You do not have the right to create anything. Anything you can and will create will be completely ignored. You do not have the right to be paid. If you are paid, then you are sold out and your work is no longer credible. You understand the rights they have read to you. With these rights in mind, do you still want to be an artist? Yes. Yeah. Does that piece have a name, or is it? Um, it's just it's just the impossibles. Yeah. Um, and I remember sitting in here, and you would just play little pieces like a sketch almost. Is that how you view it? Is when you're creating a piece like that? Um, that's how I always compose. Yeah. Basically, I because um, I know some people are very sort of structured about it, but when I sit down to play the piano, quite often um, to warm up, I'll just play some chords. Because mm. one of the things about um, playing music. Like performing, yeah. but not from music, but just sitting down to play something, is getting into a sort of zone where you're completely mm. relaxed and calm. And because because playing any instrument should be basically effortless, it should yeah. be as effortless as saying, as just right. speaking, you know. Um, so I'll just play some chords, and I'm kind of semi intentional mm. about what the chords are. And sometimes they'll follow into something that's quite interesting, and then I'll put an improvisation on top of it and yeah. gradually mold it into something. And I think I think a couple of the ideas that I threw out there was like I don't know Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, coupling black books, all that mm. kind of. Because we really or... like the black books theme, didn't yeah. we? Mm. It's that sort of. It's not quite a tango, but it's something mm. like that. And so I, I borrowed that idea of a rhythm and then turned it inside out, kind of. Right. Yeah. Um, and then because we were talking about what kind of sound we want, but then you went out for a coffee mm. or. To eat. Yeah. And in those ten minutes, I wrote that theme, wow, right, and okay. it just it just worked yeah. so well. And then and you layered other instruments on top of it and things. Is yes. that how this works? Yeah. Yeah. So the um, I I just did it from a synthesizer mm. and and that laptop, um, and just try to get um because this new synth board has all these percussion sounds in right. it as well. Oh, brilliant. Is, um, yeah. I, I wanted a Turkish mm. vibe. Yeah. So I found some. They're not quite Turkish, but it's it's passably Turkish. Um. And just just get that, that black book's weirdness mm. basically. Definitely. But, but it's a bit more and I think I mean the finished theme tune is probably one of the last things that actually gets down and created, isn't it? Because yeah. we started off by like sending each other podcasts and getting down a whole bunch of ideas and then we did the recordings of the six episodes mm. and the editing and then somewhere in that process was the start of the theme tune and then the final Thing was just tagged on at the start, and that was mm. like one of the last things to do, wasn't yes. it? When creating the podcast, yeah, because when you when you're building it on um, you know on the software, it's like Lego, isn't it? Yeah. And, and you, mm. you just make sure all the components and such like this, um, and yeah, and you realise that oh, actually, we haven't got so and such things to do mm. that, and, um, but and the first. Well, basically, so far, we've got the first six episodes. We're planning on recording more, but we've decided the first six episode is going to consist of a series and uh, I guess the idea of it becoming a series just kind of developed over time. It's it, well it developed from yeah yeah um, from, from a natural progression of how yeah. you how you start deciding okay I'm gonna make something mm. and then all the way through to um, creating it 
you know, finishing the damn thing, plotting it out for you know to friends mm. to think about it, and then the um, the process of putting it out to the rest of the world, yeah. getting feedback, getting perhaps remuneration. Mm. If anyone would like to sponsor this um, <laughs> podcast, by the way, um, yeah, just send a check in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and I think it took until like the second episode before we knew what kind of direction we wanted to create. Because I, I think the first two, the first one we just did how we do this, and then after building a few blocks, we kind of saw more of the pathway. And I wanted to create mm. sort of like a story of like someone yes. could listen to the first six episodes and they could basically have no idea what they want to create and not sure if they want to be a creative person. And then by the end of it, they could go through all these six steps and kind of create something i mean Gang. it's not really a a, res- a recipe <laughs> thing like that but you could probably listen along to it and then think oh yeah i've had a similar problem to that it's, and yeah i think it's it gets around the imposter syndrome yeah. thing it gives you confidence that yeah firstly everybody else has it as well um but that if you if you listen through sequentially you don't have to worry about anything because mm. everybody else is worried about it before you so just just go with it it's fine and i was i was reading uh the introduction to that book actually by amanda palmer and apparently hmm. um some surgeon had imposter syndrome exactly the same as a creative person so i think any field you're in i think it's just quite common not to be 100 percent confident in your abilities i think if you are amazingly mm. confident in your abilities you'll probably muck <laughs> up because it's that worry that keeps you sharp maybe Yes, it is. But but also something that's quite interesting is the it's kind of part of what I was saying before about when, you know, you just when you're creating music or reading poetry, mm. it should be the most effortless thing yeah. in the world mm. to do. Um you you can't be worrying about other things and mm. you can't have absolute conviction that you are the best yeah. to be doing yeah. that. You just you just trust that everything's gonna be fine. Mm. That there's no there's no need to worry about anything when you're playing. And yeah, one of the episodes uh, we decided to do was all about our writer's block, and mm. that's quite a big topic. Um, I think I argued that writer's block doesn't exactly exist. You were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Does? I disagreed for at least 10 minutes before mm. I realised that actually... First of all, you meant something slightly different. Yeah, like exactly. that. I did, yeah. I... It was more the... There is a writer's book, but you can all you can find your way around. It was basically my yes. point, and um, it's it's kind of been create. It's kind of been created into something bigger than it is. It's something more to worry about mm. than like it, there isn't an actual physical like writer's book there for actually worrying about. It's more the it's, it's like become a really big psychological thing, whereas. Yeah. You can find a little, loads of little different ways around about it. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, one of the episodes I wrote a poem and performed that for that, so I thought I'd share it with you now, uh, just a bit of a preview. Um, so this one is called uh, Writer's Block. How do you overcome a writer's block? Do you run into the wall, smashing your head against it again and again? Do you put it off? Sit there reading a book till the wall gets up and walks away. Do you pick up a spray can and deface it with lurid manic ravings and little doodles of stick men playing catch? How do you come over writer's block? Do you call up a friend and climb over on a ladder wrought of their imagination? Do you chip, chip, chip away till the wall comes crumbling down? Do you craft a wrecking ball of raw emotion and just smash on through? Came in like a wrecking ball and now that song is stuck in your head, and you never write anything now, just a deaf rant about writer's book, like every other tired poet out there. I love that line in the, um, the book, was it Lurid? To face it with Lurid Manic Cravings Lurid, and Lurid. Stick Man Playing Catch. Yes, the rhythm of that is, it's sort of crunchy. Well, right, okay. It's like, you know when, when, you, when you're walking across the gravel driveway? Oh yeah. It's, hmm. it's that kind the of crunchy. The hmm? uh, It's when you're walking through leaves and um, the sound of the leaves when you're walking through it goes that's a susurrus. That, that's, that's a susurrus? A susurrus. A susurrus. Yeah. 
I don't know if it's used for other things, but I remember that being used. I didn't know that word. Yeah. That's interesting. I can't remember where I saw it. Probably QI or something. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so that is um, the theme of one of the pieces. It's all about writing is black. Um, yeah, we cover a whole variety of different topics in the mm. podcast. Um, do you want to? Mm. Yes. So um, yeah, sorry. Um, the, um, the 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 is black thing is just one more thing I kind mm. of wanted wanted to touch about, which is that. When you're stuck for something to say, like like then when I thought of fifteen things to say at yeah. once and then didn't pick one, <laughs> which happens quite a lot with me, um, is that you you're always capable of of putting two words together, mm. aren't you, and two ideas together, and um, from there you can create something which is rather more expansive. From that point, I think the. The genuinely difficult bit is, which we get to towards the end of the series of podcast, is um, how do you then find an audience yeah. for that? Mm. Uh, which is currently what we're trying to do <laughs> at this point. Now mm. we're marketing it, um, and that's that's one which I actually I'm going to be really interested in when we do a, an, another series of this when we start speaking to other people about how they um, they market their stuff. Because um, in in the next series we're, we're planning to have more people or guests mm. and, and more questions as well so please do send send in questions about things um and whether you're performing stuff live or whether you're trying to just push through the in, you know through internet channels and that sort of thing and, and big, i think big, i think big, one big. of the key things is knowing what your audience is because then you can like um you can target your audience specifically, can't you? Because mm. uh, you don't have to target absolutely everyone. Because you, I mean, you could create things with that broad mass appeal, but it's creating things that appeal for your specific niche as well. That was another topic we were covering. It is, and that's that's particularly interesting because um, something something so many artists say when when they've written a few songs, mm. they'll quite often go, "I'm going to write something more commercial now," yeah. and yeah. it's always terrible. Mm. Right, without fail, because they're trying to be, they're trying to be something they're not. Yeah. Um, and until you've written some stuff and you know what your own style is, mm. like literary or musical or whatever, um, you the the audience will find you to some extent. You go and perform it like everywhere, everywhere you possibly can, mm. and people who enjoy it will come up to you and say, "Oh, that was rather not bad, actually." Um, and that will give you like they'll tell you which things they liked about it, mm. or you can you, know, you can ask them what do you like specifically about it, which which um, which phrases you know have a particular rhythm to them that yeah. you, that you sure. like, um, and which which subject matters are of interest, and you you go from there, um, and as long as you can, as long as you can be honest about what what you're creating, mm. I think that's what we said in that in that episode, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. If, if you're trying to um, create for a specific audience, but you haven't quite got that down yet, you're, you're not writing for some... You're still writing for yourself, like ultimately. Mm. You've still got to do it for your own interests. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it. You've, you've missed the point. Yeah, and one of the things we were talking about is whether you write for an audience, mm. whether you write for yourself, whether you write for... Someone that's paying you to write the piece, yes, and yeah, yeah. they're all quite different experiences as well. And like, I mean, some people just choose to write for themselves, and that's a great way of doing it, isn't it? I mean, that's probably quite a pure way of creating mm. art. I mean, and then when you're writing for an audience, it, every each different um, audience changes how you view the work, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, and there's there's so much that it, it depends on. When you're performing it as mm. well, like there are so many factors. Yeah. If you're <laughs> if you're playing energetic music on a very hot and sticky day, people aren't probably going to dance to it. <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah. going to get a different reception. So yeah, I believe you've got a piece prepared. Do you want to do that now? Uh, well, I wouldn't go so far as to say prepared, but there are some pieces <laughs> I sure. what I can play. Um, yes. So the one I thought I'd do is um, the one which is is my favourite mm. of the ones I've I've composed because. Um, it's when I try to do something a bit different. Right. Because yeah. with each each composition that I write nowadays, um, 
when I first write it, it's too hard for me to play. Mm. Although there are aspects of it which I can't actually Yeah, I, play. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and I'm currently writing one, I was working on it earlier on today, which is in um, a time signature of 5-8. Mm. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. And because it's so fast, I always miss the changes. Right. So, I'm trying mm. to, and it's got some really awkward chord mm. combinations in. And um, this was kind of like that when I wrote it during the lockdown. And I wanted a piece that was had a, a very relaxed sort of bossa nova feel, mm. but was unconventional in some way. So it has negative harmony in it, it has a 7-8 right. time mm. signature, and then there's one part of 6 in there. Uh, I'll just play it, shall I? Yeah, I'll play it, and then, then you can make it your own piece.
have to swizzle faster than that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be swizzled it differently. <laughs> anyway, that we are um, behind the scenes information there. We were just turning our test game around and uh, so that it could capture our beautiful conversation Jesus. instead of your beautiful music. Uh, yeah, so another uh, couple of topics that we covered. I mean, there's probably tons more that we've missed and you can catch them on the podcast. But uh, two main ones I wanted to just quickly go over was the fact that uh, one of the main really important things is keeping going and the other main important things is deciding when it's done. Yes. So yeah, keeping going. How do you keep going day after day? You've done this for how many years now as, as a full-time musician? Um. When did I become a full time musician? I registered my business in 2013. No, yeah. 2011. So, um, 11 years. Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, only being full time sort of after, after two or three because, you know, it takes a while mm. to build, build things right. up. Right, sure. Um, but yes, and if you work on it every day to some extent, because then you either say, you know, show up for work every day, because when, you, when you're a freelancer, especially, mm. um, you've got to find your own work. Well, but you can wait for it to come in, but, yeah. um, you know. Yeah. You need, to, you need to look for new things to do as well that, mm. that, that challenge you in different ways. Um, like write a piece of music which you can't play when you, when you first mm. learn it. Um, but you only have to do a little bit. Like you just have to do something that interests you. And if you're doing, if you're trying to do the same project for a while, you need to perhaps change things up. Especially like yeah. if you're somewhat distractible. And yeah, I mean, I was going to come up with the same thing, whereas like, I quite like to have various different projects on the go and always be mm. developing new skills and things. So I've got the Artist Echoes music blog, which I'll work on for a couple of hours a day, and I might do some poetry, and I'm currently learning uh, video game design, which is a brand new thing for this yes. year, yeah. and um, guitar and things. So I think I find, as a creative person, it's really good to have a variety of different creative outlets to work on. And that also helps with writing's book. So if you mm. get stuck on one yes. project, you can switch to another. Uh, yeah, I... I do like having a variety of different projects and yeah. always something new and different to work on. I think that's yeah, exactly. Key. Yes, you've you've got to keep the the novelty aspect of mm. it going for the for the the dopamine, um, as well as the well, we'll come to it in a minute. The yeah. satisfaction of actually finishing something. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you, if you have lots of, of stuff to do, you're you're keeping going. It's just yeah. it's natural, isn't it? And um, I'm not sure if you follow this quite as much as I do, but I quite like. I think records are quite uh, keeping records not music records, but keeping records of what you've done is a really important part of uh, yes. keeping an idea of what you've on. So like, at the end of each day, I'll keep a note of all the things I've worked on, and I might um, create compilations of all my poems that I've done, worked on in a year to see mm. if work I've done, or do something with the music, or go through all the different game projects that I've been working on, and take screenshots, and mm. work out different things. Because yes, yes. I think that's, that's a skill that you definitely do uh, in a normal job. You have to a record of what you've done Actually, of course yes you've got some sort of um uh, you know folder with all your stuff in it that you contributed to um to whatever job it is i, yeah. I hadn't thought of it that way but yeah yeah you would have that in your and is that something you do do you keep records or do you have other ways well, of... um i mean the music that i write obviously i i learn and then i remember hopefully forever as long mm. as i play it and keep adding to it um, mm. But there's do you not write really music? Do you write it down? Or? Not so much, no. because it's quite laborious for me right. to do. I'm okay. not that fast at writing it, and mm. also I get really bored. Right. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. Because and also I have too many other ideas. Yeah. When I'm spending yeah. when I'm spending time scoring something out, there's a lot more time to consider every single bar. Right. Yeah. And you're like, but we could do like this, but we could do like that, right. we could do like that. <laughs> and after yeah. three hours, you've written three bars, and yeah. it's not really. Yeah. into productivity but um, yeah having a list of every, all the pieces of music I've ever written mm. is nice especially if that list then keeps increasing yeah, definitely. Um, but journaling is the main thing oh yeah so sure. the, the um, I know this is kind of a bit seems a bit sort of naff mm. isn't it that's so basically what I'm doing by keeping a note of what it I do is. each day but yours is um, I guess more in depth is it a little bit because it, it's broader it's not just my um achievements or um, intentions or goals with my work but yeah. it's, it's everything else as well because sure. um, I always find it difficult to separate work and life you know um, and 
actually I don't need to mm. really because to me you know the, I don't have office hours yeah I can mm. whenever I've got free time I can come and faff around mm. on, the, on the piano for a while you know? um, and if someone wants to book a lesson in with a few hours notice like if I'm free I just do that yeah. if, if I've not got mm. anything you know mm. anything planned um, so uh, but yeah, yeah, journaling is, is the main thing right. because mm. the, the progression of how, like, how to become financially sufficient, mm. successful, yeah. is a completely different component, and that's something mm. I, I struggled with because not because I I struggled to monetize it per se, but getting the right kind of work mm. where I didn't need to work too many hours a week just to cover my living costs, yeah. you know. So um, I only need a few hours work a week, mm. and I know my living costs covered and that took a lot of work right and all of that is documented in the journal i started in 2017 yeah and i can it just like the way it reads there's a lot of confusion in the first few right. pages because okay. i always write in full yeah. sentences and every, every entry is enormous <laughs> <laughs> and, right. um yeah and it becomes more and more yeah. coherent and optimistic yeah. as it goes on and oh, if i didn't have the journal yeah. i wouldn't even notice that yeah. i wouldn't even be aware of it yeah I suppose the, I mean, one of the other topics we did was deciding when a piece is done, which is quite a difficult <laughs> one. How do you decide it's done? And how do you decide what ends up in the final piece? Uh, it's all quite complicated. Yes. Do you have any idea how you do that? <laughs> um, what did we say in the podcast about this? Um, I think deadlines are important. Yeah. Mm. Um, if I have a show that I'm putting on, mm. that's... I mean, that's the deadline, because once you've announced it to the world, and you've said, and you know, you've paid the deposit on the roomy yeah, hiring, yeah. and you've printed all the flying figures, you've got to have your stuff ready and finished by then, yeah, otherwise the show doesn't happen. Yeah. You, you pull a, um, was it Adele recently who did that? Uh, well, somebody, somebody pretty famous. She did cancel a lot of shows, but I didn't know whether that was because of illness. I don't want to say was, something. I think, I think it was Adele, imagine someone else. Mm. It was because it wasn't ready. Right, okay. Um, so, you know, it happens mm. to have... Yeah, famous people as well. Um, otherwise, it's I think it's the edit with this quite an important skill. Whether you're doing the edit yourself or whether you're handing over to someone else to do yeah. the edit. Yeah. Like, you might start with a list of, list of I don't know twenty songs for an album or mm. eighty poems for a book, and then coming mm. through down to the ones that you actually want to go in there. Yeah, yeah, and having that accountability mm. as well. Like, like this project, we kept each other. Yeah. Go well. Poked me more than I had spoke <laughs> to you about it, but um, true. Yeah, just saying. Have you done this bit yet? Yeah. Because otherwise, it would never have got finished no, unless true. we were both accountable to each other. It has been a year. So. <laughs> yes, it's been quite a long time. But the next one will be faster mm. because we know what we're doing now. And yeah, so those are some of the different uh, topics that we've been covering. Uh, I think we're coming towards the end of the podcast, but I just wanted to quickly focus a little bit on uh, what happens after it's all recorded. So. Uh, you did some audio balancing so that it would fit within the. I guess there was a there was a so some details of what the audio quality had to be like. In yeah. Order to get. Yeah. Well, everything I recorded in like super high studio quality, yeah. mm. um, and it's one one of the things that sort of I don't say amateur. No, amateur is a nice word. Amateur podcasters, yeah. which is sort of fancy talking mm. about something. Yeah. Um, the level, the volume isn't high enough. Yeah, so you have to have your iPhone yeah. turned right up mm. just to be able to hear what's going. Whereas if you just do a little bit of editing on mm. a bit of compression and, and yeah, balancing yeah. thing, you can really push that. Whereas I, I did the, I did it slightly different. You did more the sound quality. Mm. Whereas I was uh, taking care of more, uh, so like the pacing and the, the pace of the mm. first pass. So there is actually a part of Adobe Audition where you can uh, basically trim out all the little tiny bits and I found <laughs> a way to cut them out automatically and then I could go in and, and fine tune it and just make everything flow a lot smoother so yeah. if there are any pauses, if there are any breaks, there are a lot of like you can hear people inhaling and things like that and you cut all those mm, out yes. and it just makes yes. the whole podcast sound a lot more professional and mm. That's just what you expect to hear when you're listening to a podcast. You don't expect to hear any of these other bits. And with a podcast or with a song, it's all these little tiny details that 
add up to make something sound professional. To make it sound really professional, yeah. And you probably wouldn't tell the difference if you just listen to one and then... If you just listen to someone's indie podcast hmm. or indie song, you'd think, oh, that's just normal. But then if hmm. you listen to it next to one that's high, really well produced, there's a gulf in class. There and really I think is. that makes yes. the whole difference on a podcast like we're doing hmm. or... On a on a big production, no matter what you're doing, yeah, say. yeah, and giving it to somebody who knows what they're doing mm. is actually a valid thing to do, um, as well. So, like the the, the bits where you're chopping out the bits where I'm, um, yeah. when I just get stuck <laughs> <laughs> for twenty different ideas and I don't know which sentence to pick. Um, so just say nothing for thirty seconds whilst my brain sort of works out. So what's yeah, going hopefully on. my level of audio editing is up to scratch. <laughs> well, yeah, I've so had it, some experience in it. So <laughs> yeah, no, and so. yeah, as we. Used to spoke about earlier another thing that sets it apart is hopefully doing the theme tune doing the podcast intro and uh we create some artwork well i did some artwork you did uh, yeah. uh the idea with the artwork is basically just uh we have charles at the piano me at a writing desk and we kind of had silly capes, capes on, on as though uh <laughs> you know like your kids <laughs> basically yes and it's like it was just quite a rough uh sketch i do quite rough sketches of um, loads of things just when I'm working and uh, I just did the two of us and then I put it through an app that kind of basically when you're doing, when you're creating cartoons they do a sketch and then they pen over it in ink or I just use an app to do that and then I okay. put it through Photoshop and did a second edit and added uh, the name at the bottom and just do loads of tweaks in Photoshop to mm. get it up to standard and okay that's kind of what I do for the theme tune, actually, because it is yeah, just exactly. a sketch yeah. that you can mm. polish up a little bit. And Basically, it is the same as the theme tune. I was mm. wondering whether they were the same, but yeah. So yeah, you start off with a basic sketch. You, I could have inked it out myself, but I found an mm. app to ink it out, basically. And then I went through all of it just with a fine-tooth comb, basically, and mm. uh, straightening it out in there. Do you prefer doing, Photoshop? Um, doing stuff on a computer like that or video um image editing on a computer uh yeah i think you can get a lot more uh, detail into it on on a computer I'm more well, I'm, I'm just more used to using a hmm. computer i suppose if i had a pencil or something on a you know on an ipad an eye pencil yeah i could do yeah. it like that but i just i have much more natural using a mouse and keyboard than i am just uh Thing anywhere That's else. interesting. I'm completely the opposite with everything. Mm. I need analog sure. stuff. And then the final uh, stage. Once the once it was all completed and we put it all together, we sent it out to a few people to listen to. So uh, thanks to those. I believe Aaron listened to some of our podcasts mm. and um, probably some other people. I don't know if you wanna. Uh, yeah, I, I who did send it out? Chris Tunstall. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, um, Chris, it's always that. great to get a bit of feedback <laughs> and then the final thing we have to do is get it out there which I was amazed how easy it is to actually get a podcast out there these days uh, probably quite similar to when you're putting your songs on Spotify uh, there is a page that we use there's probably loads of different ones but we used Anchor FM uh, so you sign up for an account and then you can upload the podcast to Anchor and then when the podcast is on Anchor it automatically goes on Spotify and then it generates an R, what's called an RSS feed. I, a little bit of technical knowledge. An RSS feed basically just takes all the data from that website and puts it on other websites. Okay. So it'll take the podcast name and it'll take the podcast image and it'll put it on other websites. So you can put it on all of the websites. So we're on iTunes, we're on Amazon Music, we're on Google, Google. Podcasts and loads of other ones like Radio Public and ones I've not really used before but we're on about <laughs> 10 different services so you can find the impossibles on there and the trail is on there at the moment and this mm. Sunday we will have full podcast on there yes it'll, so, be, it'll be up and if we like yeah, and we've, we've done a thing and we've <laughs> finished it and it's there yes um, and anything we've forgotten there's, there's more information in the description that's what we say at this point <laughs> yeah, isn't it definitely. more in the description so hopefully we've told you a bit of the journey of how a podcast comes created and that's basically what our first six episodes are the journey Going from an idea which was nothing, which was our idea of doing a podcast, and coming to finish project, project, <laughs> project is the right word, but having to finish products out there, which is, mm. and then I think maybe for the next podcast we'll do like what happens next after it's out there, maybe we'll do that on our next uh, episodes that we record. Uh, but yeah, we are on everywhere. Uh, the Impossibles 
think the only one that's different is we're at Impossibles on Twitter because the the Impossibles doesn't fit on Twitter. <laughs> but we are, yeah. The Impossible is on all the different podcast services. So hopefully you can listen in and enjoy. Anything okay. you want to add? Um, nothing especially. Just f- thanks for for watching this and and I j- I hope like really hope you get something out of this. Yeah. Whether whether you're already a creator, um, or whether you're you you want to be. I mean, if you want to be, you already are because you're mm. already making stuff, you know. But um, yeah, I I really hope this is this is useful. Yeah, for hopefully we'll inspire someone uh, to be mm. creative. And we do take questions. We've got a questions episode coming up. I got a question from Minnie. Uh, it kind of touches on mental health and uh, looking after that and we got a question from Erin and uh, we'll go into more detail in the um, podcast this but it's more about, about it. <laughs> how much of a perfectionist you can be basically <laughs> um, so yeah uh, if you've got any questions uh, contact us on Facebook Twitter Instagram all those places so yeah uh Thanks for watching. Uh, From the mic stand, uh, we've been the Impossibles. Hopefully you've enjoyed this bit of a different episode.